And that's Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Aisha. So what was his concern? His concern was carrying the message. Seeing people worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we leave this concern, he told us what would happen. And he said it would happen rapidly. So we should understand that our returning to that, our returning to that, and again, not pointing the finger at others, looking at ourselves. Where is our own upholding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands and prohibitions and our establishing it? And within those who are immediately within our sphere, those who oftentimes it's very easy to do so, such as our children when they're young, taking time and teaching them properly and focusing on them, that has an effect on the condition of the ummah. So that's something that's particularly relevant that we can do. And then obviously, we can make direct assistance in the form of, of, of aid, uh, humanitarian, and, and otherwise, um, for those that are in places of strife. And thought prophetic mercy, um, the mercy of the believers and love and affection, it entails this. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant a quick relief and enable us to be of those who were stricken with feverishness and sleeplessness because of their iman. And these are the qualities of believers. That we be stricken with feverishness and sleeplessness. That we work hard and we strive to improve the condition of the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in times such as these. So this mercy is a quality of the Prophet وسلم, and it's a quality of his Ummah and it is an obligatory quality. It is an obligation. And why do we say that? The Prophet ﷺ said in what Ahmed Hakim narrate on the authority of Abu Huraira, as well as at Tirmidhi who said it was Hassan and Hakim said it was Sahih. Sami'atu Rasulullah As-Sadiq Al-Masduq Aba Al-Qasim Sahib Al-Hujra Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yaqub So Abu Huraira said, I heard uh, the Messenger of Allah, the true, whose truth was confirmed, Abu Qasim, the dweller of this apartment, or the owner of this, uh, this quarters, this Hujra, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, La tunzi'u rahma illa min shaqi. That mercy is not stripped except from someone who is damned or someone who is wretched. And if someone who is wretched, uh, is it anticipated that they'll have a good ending or that they'll be in a good place in the hereafter? And from this we understand the obligation of mercy and the obligation of emulation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam in his mercy. And what, did, uh, his mercy, what extent did his mercy reach? His, his mercy reached the extent that rather than seeking the annihilation of his enemies, for instance, by being smashed between mountains, he, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa he uh, would pray that they be guided and that Allah bring from their loins those who would worship Allah. His mercy reached the extent that he would even try to avert punishment from befalling those who wounded him and his enemies. So in the battle of Uhud, when he was wounded in the face, his forehead was split, his lip was split, his ruba'iyah, like the second tooth over, um, it was broken, his helmet was smashed, and his face was bloody, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his chain mail, his armor was driven in his, into his cheek so much that Abu Ubaidah removed it with his teeth and lost his teeth. He used his teeth as pliers to remove this, uh, this link that was driven in the Prophet's cheek. And it was so driven that it required so much force, his teeth fell out from it. So what did he do when he was, his face was bloodied in this manner? al Ozai narrates that he um, took something and began to dry his face to prevent the blood from falling on the ground. And he said that he feared that if blood fell on the ground, uh, meaning the blood of a prophet, um, that punishment would descend on his enemies. And he didn't want to see them annihilated. In the same circumstance, the companions, it was difficult for their hearts. And they loved him, sallallahu alayhi wa more than they loved themselves. It was difficult for their hearts to see their Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wounded in this man. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, baraka alayhi wa alayhi. And um, they said, well, if you would only pray against them. And he was angry with that. He got angry with that and he said, 
bu'ithtu da'iyatan wa rahmah. I wasn't sent as a cursor, I was sent as an inviter and as a mercy. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa So those were his qualities and that's the quality he instructed his ummah to have. That is a quality that he, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, encourages ummah to have and said it would only be stripped from someone who's to be damned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the ummah as having that in the Quran as well. So if we've understood that rahma, uh, rahma, that mercy is a prophetic quality and a Quranic quality, a quality of the believers. It's a quality that we should um, strive to show. We should make takhalluk, takhalluk of mercy, uh, demonstrating or acting out, forcing ourselves to be merciful. Um, you know that hopefully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will include us with those believers who are truly like this, particularly in times like this when yeah, a, a, a week almost doesn't pass without us hearing news about strife um, for our ummah, and again, particularly in places that are dear to the hearts of some of us. And I keep saying it's close to my heart because I personally spent a couple of years studying in Damascus, and it really um, paved uh, the, the foundation for all of my further studies. And um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give afiyah and rahmah and lutuf and nusra um, to the people of that land and to all of the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So how does one of us acquire a characteristic such as this, such as mercy, such as tawadu, humility, such as hilm, forbearance, such as sakha, generosity, these prophetic qualities that the Prophet ﷺ demonstrated and called us to and said um, was the cause of his being sent. Bu'ithtu li'utammima makarama al-akhlaq. He said, I was sent to complete or perfect noble character. How do we um, go from it being abstract and beauty that we see in the Prophet ﷺ in the Quranic verses and hadith to being a reality in our hearts? He demonstrated or explained with respect to one of these qualities something that applies to all of them, to noble character, um, in his saying, Al-Hilmu Bit-Tahallum. He said, Al-Hilmu Bit-Tahallum Wal-Hilmu Bit-Tahallum. That knowledge is by learning and forbearance, meaning forbearance is acquired by acting forbearing. So someone who has a temper, they're not the least bit forbearing. You know, someone uh, makes them angry and they see red. And until they've uh, vented, that's that. Either striking or breaking or talking bad about someone who has Someone who's like that. There's someone of, of anger. Um, how did that person become someone of hell? Someone who's not um, governed by their anger, but rather someone who controls their anger by acting that way. By acting like their halim until eventually um, that quality takes a root as a reality in their heart until they eventually become like that. Or we could say um, that al-khuluq bit takhalluq that good character is by forcing oneself to show good character even if you're not like that. And um, some of the ulama, and the Imam Ghazali rahimahullah, who I understand um, your Imam is very fond of, and may Allah preserve him and benefit greatly by him. And in any um, discussion of character, his works are particularly beneficial. He compares this process to someone who wanted to learn uh, to be a calligrapher. So if someone wanted to be a calligrapher, they start out with sloppy handwriting. How would they become a calligrapher who, who naturally wrote well? The only thing that they could do is use this bodily organ, use this bodily limb of theirs their hand and their arm to do the actions of a calligrapher, someone who has good writing. However, initially it was with tekelif, it was with work and discipline and forcing themselves to do that through days and weeks and months and years of working at it, having the right stroke. This letter ends above the, le the line, this letter comes below the line, the hook of this letter is like this, the dot of this letter is like that. Working at it, getting a writer's cramp, getting blisters on their fingers and doing it until an effect from the action of this physical limb ascends to their heart and mind and then the benefit of that descends back to this physical limb and they continue to write uh, Ella beautifully, however it's effortless after that. And that's naturally how they are. 
And that's how any uh, virtue um, can be acquired from our point of view. From the point of view of the work we have to do, ultimately it's only acquired by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah for tawfiq uh, for us and all of the believers. But if we hope to be people of mercy and any other quality, the way that we do that and the path to that is by acting that way and acting merciful. So for instance, d donating to those in need, to those in strife, praying for them thinking and reflecting about their condition until we actually shed tears for them. Maybe at first they're closer to crocodile tears, we worked at it. However, by um, tachalluk, by acting um, this way and working at it, that eventually becomes khuluk, which is something that is naturally one's disposition and how one is. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are merciful, and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ar-Rahimuna Yarhamuhum Ar-Rahman Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala. Those who are merciful, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, shows mercy to them. Blessed and exalted is he. So he asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us of those who follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in deed, in word, and in the characteristics of our hearts, particularly that of mercy and all beneficial characteristics. Um, and particularly deep Iman by his mercy and he's the most merciful of the merciful and we ask him to have mercy and uh, elevate and give Nusra and give uh, victory and comfort and ease to the believers wherever they may be and wherever strife uh, may be falling the believers Allahumma aafina wa tufbina wa hafadna wa nsurna wa farraj'anna wa muslimin اللهم اكفنا وإياهم جميعا شر مصائب الدنيا والدين اللهم أصلحنا وأصلح بنا وأصلح من في صلاحه صلاح المسلمين ولا تهلكنا وأهلك من في هلاكي صلاح المسلمين اللهم اصلينا الغيث ورحمة ولا تجعلنا من القانتين اللهم اصلينا الغيث ورحمة ولا تجعلنا من المحرومين اللهم ارفع واصرف عنا وعن المسلمين الأذى والبلاء والغلاء والقحط والجب والجل والظلم وجميع الفتن والمحن والمراض والإسقام الزيد والضلال والحروب والزلازل والفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن وادفع لهم عنا شر الطاغين والظالمين والباغين والمعتدين بما شئت عاجلا غير عاجل في عافية وسلامة في رحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين and please excuse me and I'm actually going to excuse myself from questions as well because I have another